This is Dr. Adriel Bowles of Hobnob Games, and this is the ninth tutorial of our intermediate series. And today we're gonna to be talking about implied odds. As always, you can find this tutorial along with all of our tutorials at hobnob.games, where you can also download and play on our live poker app. Okay, so today we're gonna to be talking about implied odds. In our beginner series, we talked a little bit about direct odds and how to calculate direct pod odds. But today we're going to be talking about um, an extension of this, implied odds. So it says spe specifically, implied odds refers to how much money you can make or win on later streets, the turn in the river, if you hit one of your outs. So you're in a situation where you have a draw and you don't have the correct pot odds. You don't have direct odds to make a profitable call. But the idea is, is that you don't have much of a hand now, but you might make uh, you might make your straight, you might make a flush or whatever draw you have. If you make your draw, how much money can you make on later streets? Can you make enough money on later streets to make up for the lack of direct odds you're facing currently? That's the idea behind implied odds. If the answer to this question is a lot, so you believe you can make a lot of money on later streets if you hit one of your outs, then we'd say you have very good implied odds. But if the answer is not very much or nothing, you know, once the draw gets there, all your opponents are gonna get scared and just fold, then we would say that they, you have very poor implied odds. But we can do better than this. We need to be very precise in terms of calculating our implied odds. Part of it is gonna be science, and we're gonna do a little bit of math here, but I promise you the math isn't too tough. And part of it is gonna be an art, an art of in terms of reading your opponents. So let's go through an example together. Uh, this is the exact same example I had in our beginner series, if I remember right, in the 11th tutorial, where we went over an example of calculating direct odds. So in the hand, uh, we have queen, ten of hearts, and the flop comes two hearts. Hey, that's what we were looking for. We we're looking for a flush draw, and we flop our flush draw. Um, and the, there's $100 in the pot, and the villain bets $65. Okay, well, let's real quick just look at, do we have direct odds to call here? So our equity, uh, since we have a flush draw, there are nine more hearts left in the deck that will come and could give us our flush. So we have nine outs. And using the rule of two and four, uh, we want one more card. So nine times two is we currently have 18% equity. Um, but what are our pot odds being laid to us? Well, there's $100 in the pot when the villain bets $65. There's now uh, $165 we can win, but we have to risk $65 to win $165. Stated another way, we're getting 2.5 to one on our money. But we wanna convert this, uh, this ratio here to a percentage so we can directly compare it to that 18% equity that we have. So if you remember back from the beginner series, the way we do this is we take our ratio and we flip it and add one to the denominator. So when we flip 2.5 over one, uh, it becomes one over and add one more to the denominator, becomes one over 3.5 and convert that to a percentage is 28%. So according to the, our pot odds, we need 28%, but we're getting 18%. It's not enough. So in this scenario, uh, if we just paid attention to our direct odds, we should fold. We're just not getting good pot odds in order for this to be a profitable call. But even though we aren't getting good direct odds right now, um, if we hit our flush draw, can we get enough money on future streets on the turn in the river to make up for the lack of pot odds that we have right now? That's the answer we're trying to answer with our implied odds. So what pot odds do we need to get in this scenario? Well, the correct answer is five. How do I know that? I simply just memorize the number. There are just some numbers you just need to memorize because you're gonna be in that spot over and over again. So in your poker career, you're gonna have a flush draw uh, a very large number of times. So you just have to memorize anytime you have a flush draw, you have nine outs or 18% equity on the next card. And you need five to one on your money in order to, to get uh, correct direct odds. Uh, why is it five to one? Let's run the math real quick. We wanna convert this into a percentage. So we flip it and add one. So five over one becomes one over six and one six is 17%. So uh, when we're getting five to one on our money, we only need 17%, but how much do we have? We have 18% uh, because of our flush draw. So in this scenario, now we can call. But in the scenario that we're just facing, we're not getting the five to one in our money. Um, there's, the villain just bet $65 into a $100 pot. 
which means we're only getting 2.5 to 1 on our money. Therein lies our problem. We're not getting the correct direct odds to make a profitable call. But what about our implied odds? Well, let's see. Um, we need 5 to 1, but we're currently only got 2.5 to 1. So we need to make up for this difference. So let's do a very, very simple math formula to figure out in dollar numbers what we need to make up on future streets. So what are our implied odds that we need? It's a very simple formula. It's what we need to get, subtracted, uh, subtract what we got, and multiply that by the bet. So uh, let's start by what do we need? We need five to one on our money. What do we got? We got 2.5 to one on our money. So we're gonna look at the gap. What's the gap between uh, what we need and what we got? Uh, and multiply that by the bet. And the current bet size is $65. So let's, uh, let's do the, the subtraction in the middle. So 2.5, that's the gap. That's the gap between what we need to get for the correct direct odds and what we currently have. So the gap is 2.5. 2.5 times $65 is $162. That's how much money we need to make up on future streets in order to make this a profitable call. So this is the key question you have to ask yourself in this scenario when you're not getting the correct direct odds and you have a draw. Can you get another $162 on either the turn and or river if you hit your flush? And this is where the science becomes a little bit more art than science because now we need to really know our opponents well in order to make this estimation. So what are some major factors we need to consider when estimating whether we think we can get this extra $162 on future streets? One of the first things you need to consider is stack sizes. Is there physically enough money in the stacks in order to get another $162? So let's say for example that you only have $100 left in your stack after you called the $65 bet, and your opponent also only has another $100 left in their stack, then you need to fold. It's physically not possible for you to get this extra $162 that you need to make up for your current lack of direct odds. So if the stack size just doesn't allow it to happen, your decision is very easy. Just fold. This, uh, just fold. But let's say there's a bunch of money left behind in the stack so that it is physically possible. There's some other things we need to consider. One is the number of opponents, because the larger the number of opponents, then the more likely it is that someone will call off another $162 when the flush gets there. So the, num the more the number of opponents, the better your implied odds. Another is your opponent types. Are you playing against very uh, conservative opponents or are they wild maniacs? If they're very conservative and when the flush draw gets there on the turn of the river, is that gonna scare the heck out of them to the point where they're not going to put any more money in the pot and they're just going to fold. If the answer to that is yes, then you don't have the implied odds that you need because if you hit your, your flush, then everyone's just going to fold and you won't make up that extra $162. But if your opponents are calling stations or wild maniacs and that even uh, when the flush gets there, it's not going to scare them, they're still going to call you down, that's what you're looking for in order to get your necessary implied odds. And the final factor I would consider is the opponent hand strength. How strong do you think your opponents or opponents are in this scenario? Because sometimes even a conservative player has a hand so strong that even when the flush draw gets there and a large bet goes in, they just simply cannot bring themselves to fold their strong hand. They might hate that the flush draw got there and they sigh, but they call anyways. So for instance, maybe they flop a set. When they flop a set, they just simply can't fold their set or maybe they have pocket aces. And it's someone that once they have pocket aces, they flop top pair with a good kicker, they just can't bring themselves to hit the fold button. So in this scenario, uh, uh, you might have the correct implied odds in order to move forward in the hand. So these are all questions that you need to honestly uh, ask yourself and give honest answers to. Um, if the answers are yes, then this is a scenario where even if you don't have the correct direct odds to call the current bet, you might have the correct implied odds and that you can make up for this lack of direct odds on future streets. So what's next? In our next tutorial, we're gonna be talking about set mining. Uh, this is actually just an extension and another application of the concept of implied odds. As always, you can find all of our videos at hobnob.games. I will see you next time.